This is RJ King, host of View from the Top and editor of D-Business Magazine. Joining us on the show today is Jim Hiller, President and CEO of Hiller's Markets. And Jim, I guess you're in the process of opening up your uh, eighth store now. That's correct, RJ. Uh, where's that going to be? And that is in Lyon Township, very close to the town of South Lyon. Okay. And what's a typical store like in terms of, uh, you know, what do you look at when you're looking at an area to grow into? How, how large of a space are you looking for? Do you build new or go into a renovated or a space existing? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, so, so in order for Hillers to really um, service the community in the way that we like, we need upwards of 50,000 square feet, which is quite large. We did build this store from new. We'll be opening probably in about six months. 50,000 feet allows us to put in that full gamut of food that people expect from Hillers, which is upwards of 60,000 different items. Well, and talk about how your business has changed, say, over the last uh, five, 10 years. You know, all these food uh, shows across the cable spectrum, and ex including Food Network, it's really been educating people. And the uh, demand for these exotic foods is just probably made your business a little bit more challenging, I would think. Well, it has. I mean, that one, one spectrum of the change of the business is that we now have a far more educated consumer. I mean, we have people like uh, Andrew Zimmer uh, uh, to thank for that, or uh, you know, some, some of the Food Network people. But the other side of the business is that the consumer now is ever more challenged financially. So, so that the real change in our basic mission is to offer the finest quality at the most reasonable price. Where 10 years ago, price was really secondary. Uh, price now is primary for everyone. There's no one left in this economy who's so wealthy that price just no longer is a factor. And just talk about how you get the food, the logistics, uh, the Detroit Produce Terminal probably plays a role, uh, but I don't know. You know, direct uh, shippers to the markets, or how does that work? Well, probably 60% uh, of our produce we buy from foreign places from you know, around the world. It doesn't come through the local produce market. And that's because one of the real tidal changes in the world is that now we have strawberries in February or cantaloupe in March, where growing up, I assume you're old enough to remember that as kids, we, we ate fruit and vegetables only at that time when they grew locally. Well, air, airplanes have changed that. You know, the world has uh, shrunk mightily. And that's one very significant change in the business. And how do you, uh, you know, ascertain the, uh, the trends that are going on in your industry in terms of the food types? Well, that's a great question, RJ, and the real answer to it is I'm up for at 3 o'clock in the morning reading. I mean, the, the real truth is that by the time a a uh, company comes to you with the product, it's already close to being too late. S so you need to read. You need to read medical journals. You need to read uh, wellness journals. You need constantly to keep your ear to the ground and know what is happening where in the world. I mean, uh, there's just no substitute for being at the front end of the pack. And how much has the uh, buy local uh, movement affected your business? Tremendously. Uh, I mean, that is a very authentic part of our company. We're now, oh, I would say up to about 5,000 Michigan products and more every week. We've even just begun a program where we are showcasing new Michigan entrepreneurs, not necessarily in the food business, but we are providing a place for them, <clears throat> excuse me, every weekend where they can come in and use our audience, we have a large number of customers, let them show their wares, show their ideas, uh, market their business. And, and Made in Michigan, you know, it's no longer just a, a, a slogan, it's a mantra. Because in truth, if each of us were to buy $10 more of Michigan products per week, it would put $2 billion in our Michigan economy. And you know, one of my, my own personal beliefs is that we're all responsible for our own salvation. And in my opinion, that's the way for our economic salvation to occur. And I guess what's the biggest challenge for you uh, in running the business? Uh, these are tough times economically. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing a diminution in 
customers, you know, and my basic core customer, I've lost about, oh, I'd say 15% of our customers who have left Michigan. So, so it is a challenge. The other is competing with much larger stores who offer similar products of slightly less quality. Uh, and there is a movement, I think, on the part of some people who want to trade down. So, so we've had to become more focused in, in addressing people's lifestyle needs and satisfying their needs, providing better service. You know, it's a, uh, the retail business is, a, is an enormous challenge. It's not easy. It takes uh, seven days a week of effort. But I, I like to think that it's extremely rewarding because we provide over a thousand good jobs for people in Michigan. And I'm hoping by the end of another year or so to up that by another three or four hundred. Oh, so that's great. That's great. We are a, a unionized company, which is a very rare thing in Michigan. And I'm frankly, I'm quite proud of that. You know, we, we have union benefits and that does make it a little harder to compete. But I also know that our employees are well treated, fairly treated. And, you know, at, at the end of the day, uh, we're all in this boat together. Sure. Well, Jim Hiller, uh, president and CEO of Hiller's Market in Southfield. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.